Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. This time of the year is always a dangerous time for young people who love to take chances. Especially who live out in the country or in the suburbs of a city like Knotty Pine. The great shady river flows swiftly by the city, and it seldom, if ever, freezes over. It's too swift and powerful to allow ice to form, except along the edges. The river does carry huge chunks of ice rapidly downstream, however. The people of Knotty Pine have long expressed a desire to have the river fenced off where young people could get into trouble with these ice flows. And our story today is about what happened while people were arguing who was going to pay for it. So we bring you the story... A Prisoner on Ice Island. Right now, the mayor of Knotty Pine and the aldermen in his council are in session over this very thing. Mr. Mayor, I have a petition here signed by 50 residents of Forest Hills Park demanding that the city of Knotty Pine fence off the banks of the Shady River adjacent to their properties. Gentlemen, please, let's wait until the floor is open for discussion to make comments. Go ahead, Bob. I have another petition signed by the 200 residents of Pine Hills requesting the same action. It's my opinion that these petitions should be given serious consideration at once, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Robert. Gentlemen, I agree with Bob that we should do as the steering committee suggests. The problem of fencing off the banks of the Shitty River to protect the children has come up several years running. And I think we should do something about it. Uh, Mr. Mayor. The alderman from the Fourth Ward. I move that the city ask for bids right away to fence off these areas before somebody's children drown. And I demand immediate discussion of the problem before the chair asks for seconds to the motion Neil made. We can discuss the matter just as well after a second as before, can't we, Fred? No, I'd like to stop this thing before it starts. Well, I, I must say that's a bit irregular. Seems to me you're putting a price on children's lives. That is not the question at hand, sir. Why should the whole city pay for fencing that'll benefit only a few? Only a few. We can't overstand that. Ah, very well. If the alderman from the fourth ward is willing to hold his motion over, we'll put the question in the special committee. I so do. Thank you. Fred, Neil, and Hal. Will you three gentlemen serve on my special committee to bring the solution of this problem before the council? One week from today. Mr. Mayor, I object. You're out of order, Fred. The matter is in special committee. I want the facts one week from today. Hey, folks in Naughty Pine are getting kind of head up over this here fencing problem. You mean fencing off the riverbanks? Yep. That's what I mean, sonny. So the kids won't fall in. Ah, that come up now for a third time. No, I'll say it has. Look here at this article in the paper. <laughs> Boy, some of the people are sure getting excited. One alderman says, why should the whole city pay for fencing the river off when only certain sections are benefiting? <laughs> maybe he's got a point. And maybe he hasn't. Seems to me it'll do the whole city some good. Uh, how much would a fence like that cost, anyhow? Mm, I don't know. It will mean fencing off quite a piece of the riverbank on both sides, though. Uh, maybe Bill knows something about this when he come back. He say he did mention something about making a turn along the river so as he could get a look at the ice flows. Well, that there ice is pretty dangerous stuff along the riverbank. And up in the tributaries, too. That there floating ice draws youngsters worse than a fire. Be too bad if one of them fell in. Mightn't find his body till spring. He's <laughs> 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 I'm going to try the ice 
here. It looks solid. I wouldn't do that if I were you, Rick. It's dangerous. Oh, what's the matter, Pat? Are you afraid? No, I'm not afraid. My dad says we should stay away from the river ice, because it's dangerous. That's right, Rick. My pop says the same thing. You can't tell how strong the river ice is along the banks. Yeah. Oh, you're a scaredy cat, too, Slim. I'll show you guys. Uh, don't do it, Rick. Uh. If you fall in, you'll never get out. What's the matter? You chicken? Don't do it, Rick. Look, it's hauling. I'll go out some more. Let's get him before he gets out anymore, huh, Slim? Yeah, try to run in back of him. Don't you guys try to get me? I'll go out farther. To Come back, Rick! Look out! Ice is cracking! Run back, Rick! Run back! Help me, boys! We'll get help as fast as we can. Good. Oh, Swim to the edge of the ice and hang on, yeah. Rick. Oh, it's cold. Yeah. Hey, help me! Get me out! How, how are we going to get him out? The ice keeps breaking off. I know. No. We'll make a human chain. Okay. I'll go first. Slim, you hold on to my ankles. Mark, you hang on to Slim's ankles. Sid, you hang on to Mark's ankles. You got it, okay? It's all right. Keep swimming, Rick. We're coming. Let's catch up with Bill Jefferson. Bill's just coming out of a shallow valley and heading across an open clearing. Suddenly, he spies Lefty and Sam running like scared rabbits. He senses that something might be wrong. Bill puts his fingers into his mouth and cuts loose with a piercing and shrill whistle. <laughs> Lefty and Sam come to abrupt stop. Bill breaks into a run so as he can find out what's up. What's wrong? Rick's, Rick's in the river. Yeah, the ice broke. I get you. One boy's in the river, and yeah. the other boys are trying to pull him out. Yeah. Right? That's right. All right. You fellas run to the nearest house in town and okay. get them to take you to Ranger headquarters. All right. Tell the fellas there what's happened. You understand? Okay. Hurry, fellas. I can't hold on this long. I'm cold. You gotta hold on, Rick. Yeah. Just a little while longer now. Hold Come on, on. Rick. your teeth and hold on. Watch, fellas. I'm getting near the edge of the ice. As soon as I grab Rick, start pulling easy like. Okay. And if the ice gives way, pull back hard. I can't hold on. I can't hold on anymore. Please hold on me, just a minute longer. I'll have you, Rick. Look out, you're slipping. I can't reach your hand. Hold on, Rick. Rick, hold on. Please let go. Oh, boy. I'm going in after him. Stay where you are. It's a ranger. Get off the ice. Hey, that's Ranger Bill. Bill's gone in after Rick. Bill's powerful arms thresh rapidly through the freezing water. He not only has to keep an eye on the half-frozen boy, but also watch the large pieces of ice so he doesn't get hit in the head. Bill turns on all his 200 pounds of muscular power, and he soon overtakes the drowning boy. He grabs a hold of Rick's hair and heads for shore. Meanwhile, Sam and Lefty are carrying out Bill's orders. They burst into Ranger headquarters like frightened deer. Rick's, yeah, Rick's in the, the water. Broke. Ranger Bill said it. Whoa, fair fellas. Whoa, you just ain't making no sense. You with Red Hat tell what's wrong. Rick Holmes fell in the river. Man, the river's colder than the North Pole. We take fire engine plenty quick. It got blankets and everything we need. Yeah. Let's go, boys. Follow us. I'll get the cab door open. Stumpy, you get boys in cab. I drive. Wrap another blanket around me, Grey Wolf. There, this heavier blanket. You plenty chilled. Huh? I'll say I am. Right to the bone. Henry, how's Rick? Oh, he's coming around fine, Bill. Stumpy and I gave him a good going over with rough towels. Oh, well, say we did. The way we wrapped him down would circulate the blood in an iron horse. Bill. Rick, I want you to be quiet. No talk, you understand? Yeah. Let's get him into the truck and head for the hospital, fellas. Right away, Bill. Is it one time the Shady River lost its victim? Yeah, thank the Lord. But the winter isn't over.
Mayor speaking. Mayor, I hope the council is satisfied now. Or are they going to wait till someone falls in the river and goes all the way down? You tell them they better get that fence up and get it up fast. Mayor, you think we're going to pay for that fence just because the folks who live near the river can't keep the youngsters out of it? You're sadly mistaken. Tell that to the council and see how they like it. Neil, you tell that there city council to get that fence up. I've lived here and I on the 50 years, and I tell you, the river's getting ornerier every year. And well, that's what I've been trying to do for a week now, old-timer. But I haven't gotten very far, thanks to Fred Petrie. Sure, I'm sorry to hear about the narrow escape Rick Holmes had. Who wouldn't? <laughs> but it doesn't change my feelings one particle about this fence, Fred. Agreed. I don't see why we who live three miles from the river should have to pay for fencing off the residential areas along the river banks. It, it's absurd. Right. Gentlemen, gentlemen. Will you please come to order? <coughs> Gentlemen, certainly you should be ready to vote on the question of fencing off the residential areas along the Shady River after the narrow escape Rick Holmes had. We could very well have lost a courageous and fine ranger, Bill Jefferson, by the same token. I have received literally dozens of phone calls voicing pro and con <coughs> opinions on this subject. We can't ignore our responsibility any longer. Well, so at this point... I'll ask for the special committee appointed by me to report on this fencing problem. Fred, go ahead. You're the chairman. Mr. Mayor, Hal and I have secured bids for the fencing in of the proposed area along both banks of the Shady River. The bids were all very close to each other. Now, the one we recommended is by the Simmons Company. Their bid is $10,000. And we've recommended it because it best meets the city engineer's specifications. Well, uh, you have heard the committee's report. Are there any questions before we put it to a vote? Uh, Mr. Mayor... The chair recognizes Alderman Petrie. I don't have a question right at the moment. They'll come later. I do, however, want to make a statement. Proceed. You have the floor. I want it clearly understood that the manner in which I gave the committee's report in no way reflects any change in opinion on my part over the problem at hand. I merely acted as appointed by the mayor. And if this thing comes to a vote, I will most certainly vote against having the city as a whole pay for the project. I'm sorry you didn't locate your conscience while you were working on the special committee. Uh, that's, that's right. I agree with you. Because someone has a, a, a new tragedy, isn't any reason to levy a special assessment against all the citizens of Naughty Pine? I don't believe in the taxation of many for the benefit of a few. Ah, you believe in the taxation of a few for the benefit of many? Know as well as I do that children from all over the city visit the river to play on the ice. My son doesn't. We live five miles from the river. Yeah? How do you know that he never will? Please, gentlemen, if you wish to speak, address the chair. I move that we have an oral vote on this proposition. I'll second that motion. All right. You've heard the motion and the second. Are you ready for the question? Uh, yes. 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 Nothing on the question? You have anything to say, Fred? Go ahead, put it to a vote. All those in favor of an all vote say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. 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 Well, it looks like I everybody's... demand the taking of ballots. Tellers, pass the ballots. The motion again is that the city build a protective fence on both sides of the Shady River within the city limits. The cost to be paid for out of city funds. <laughs> Gentlemen, gentlemen, here's the result of the ballot. The teller is fine. There are five against, four in favor, and three ballots unmarked. The motion is lost. Oh, Meetings adjourned. I should like to see Alderman Petrie in my office this afternoon. Be glad to, Mayor. I also wish to say I didn't fight the test vote because I wanted everyone to see for himself that the council is deadlocked on this issue.
Hey, Gene, this ice here looks real thick. Yeah, it sure does. Yeah, I'd say it's about six inches, huh? You're right, Gene. I'd say it's plenty safe. Oh, yeah, sure. This is solid ice. Not rubber ice like that stuff Ricky fell through. <laughs> Those little kids don't know how to take care of themselves. You think we can go out a little farther? Yeah, sure, it's okay. Yeah, look, I'll stand my heel on it. See, it doesn't crack a bit. Little do the boys realize that when Gene stamped his heel down on the ice, it did crack. Not on the surface, but underneath. Now, as Gene and Stan walk out on the ice, their weight weakens the already cracked joint. An island of ice glides out into the swiftly running river. Gene and Stan are prisoners on an ice island. Suddenly, one of the boys on the riverbank yells, Hey, you guys! Look what's happened! What's Larry yelling? Wow! Oh, We're falling down yeah, the river! Right on the middle! Hey, you guys! Want to get help? Go get my dad! And, and get Ranger Bill! Hurry! Oh, boy. We don't want to go down to the rapids! Well, get help! Boy, what a mess we're in. Well, what do we do? Well, let's try to paddle toward shore with our hands. Come on. No, your hands will freeze. And don't get near the edge. Oh. Remember what happened to Rick. Mm, you're right, Stan. What can we do? There, there, there's just nothing we can do except stand still so this cake of ice won't tip over. Fred, I guess you know why I asked you to come to my office. Yes, Mayor, I do. But I'm telling you, it's no use. But you're the leader of the opposition group. If you vote fencing off the river, the rest will go along. The ones who abstain from voting. It's no use, Mayor. I won't do it. Why? You know why. The people in the wards away from the river don't benefit one iota by a fence. Their children don't play along the river. Are you sure they don't, Fred? Certainly, I'm sure. Do you think my son would travel five miles to play on the river ice? Ridiculous. Then your son doesn't have adventure in his blood like most boys do. Hey, hey, Fred. Hey, Neil, Fred. what's the matter? Fred, I, I just got a phone call about your son. What about him? He and another boy got onto the ice in the river. It, it broke off and they're, they're floating down with the current. What? They'll drown. Neil, I'm going after Fred. He'll need help. Call the rangers, will you? Right. I'll be with you just as soon as I can. Where are they, Larry? Where'd they go? They went down the river, Mr. Petrie. They're on a big piece of ice. They're out of sight now. Were they all right when you last saw them? Yeah. They're all standing up in the middle of it. You fellows stay here until the rangers get here or the police or anybody. I'm going after those boys. I'm getting awful cold. Maybe we should move around to keep warm. No. We've got to stand still. <sighs> Moving around might crack the ice or tip it over. Yeah. And I forgot. I sure hope help comes soon. I'm getting scared. Yeah. Me too, Stan. You know something? I think we're going faster all the time. Sure we are. Current's faster here. Pretty soon we'll hit the big bend. And then we'll head right for the rapids. Yeah. And after the rapids is Dead Man's Gorge. Is that all, Larry? Yeah. That's the whole story, Bill. How long ago did Mr. Petrie leave you? About five minutes ago, I think. We better get a move on, Sonny. Red River ain't waiting for nobody. We're taking off after him right now in the truck, Stumpy. Uh, Neil, you bring the mayor and these boys with you. All right, let's go, Grey Wolf. Hop in. I ready. Head for the bridge. We ought to be able to spot him from there.
Fred races along the highway to the bridge. Bill, Henry, Grey Wolf, and Stumpy are about seven or eight minutes behind him. Fred has a million thoughts racing through his head. Thoughts mostly about the, sh the safety of his son. Then another thought enters Fred's mind. Who would ever thought this would happen to Gene? Oh, if only that fence was up. Oh, there's the bridge ahead. Maybe I can spot him from there. Fred's car shoots up onto the long bridge and slows down. Fred looks up the river first and doesn't see the boys on the ice boat. Then he looks down the river, and his heart jumps with joy. There they are, about two blocks below the bridge. He steps on the gas and takes off across the bridge. Fred's car races to the other side of the bridge and down the road along the river. Soon he overtakes them and gets ahead. He slows, slams on the brakes, jumps out of the car and heads for the river. Gene and Stan find new hope as they watch the car stop and a man jump out. Quickly, they glide opposite the place where the man's standing. Hey, look, Stan. That man sees us. Maybe we'll get rescued. You think so? Oh, I sure hope so. Oh, I'm so cold, I don't know if I can stand up much longer. It's going to be hard. We're right out in the middle now. Gene! Gene, can you hear me? Hey! It's Dad! Dad! Yeah, I can hear you, Dad! Don't give up! I'm coming after you! Okay, Dad, be careful! I wonder how he's going to get us out of here. Can't swim too well. He could tire down before he gets here. Push the gas pedal in the floor, Grey Wolf. The boys get around the bend before we get to them. It'll be a tougher job to get him off that ice floe. Ah, not able to go much faster, but I try. What's Fred trying to do, Bill? Great Scott! I hope it's not what I think he's trying to do. He's not jumping in, is he? Oh, no. He won't make it. That won't help matters anyway. He thinks he's lies across the ice! He got out the first piece of ice, all right! Larry goes to the second. He made it, standing up. Boy, sure takes a lot of courage. And there he goes again. He made it, too. Great day in the morning. He's going to try another jump. Oh, no. It's too far. He'll never do it. He's going anyhow. He made it. Hey, no, look at him. Something's wrong. He lost his balance. That piece of ice is too He's soft. in the river. Grey Wolf, race another half mile and stop the truck facing the river. Stumpy, Henry... Climb out the back of the cab and get the long ropes ready. Ray Wolf and I will tie the ropes around our chests. You fellas tie the other end of the ropes to the front bumper. And we'll try to get the three of them holding on to the ropes. The current will swing us ashore in an arc. Now be sure to lock the brakes after the truck stops. It's likely to be fast if we're going to make it. Uh, you're right. River Bend just ahead. If we miss them, they go into Dead Man's Gorge plenty quick. Get a move on, fellas. Grey Wolf and I have to be in the river and swing seconds after the truck stops. Grey Wolf brings the fire truck to a sharp stop, locks the brakes. Stumpy and Henry have tied bowling knots into the ends of the heavy ropes. Gray Wolf and Bill grab the ropes and put the loops under their arms as they run for the riverbank. The two men draw the loops tight around their chests and into the river they go, clothes and all. Soon the two expert swimmers are in the middle of the freezing river. Gray Wolf grabs Fred and begins to swing ashore like a huge pendulum. Bill puts his body in front of the large piece of ice, taking its full impact. With all his strength, he fights to wrest it from the control of the river currents and headed toward shore with the boys on it. The rope tightens and strains. Can we help you, Bill? <laughs> no. Just stand still. Bill, I hope you can do it. I can't do it, fellas. Oh. The river's too strong. Yeah. Grab the rope. Jump in. Hang on. I'll help the hold you. Okay, Bill. Here I come. All right, Gene, you're next. Okay. Come on, make it fast. I can't hold on this ice anymore. You're going to slip it out of my hands. Okay, Bill, I've got the rope. 
Hey, hey, hey. Come on, don't get panicky. You want to try me? You gotta hang on to the rope. What's crowd? I'll keep you tight against it. If you can't hold on, put your arms over it. Keep calm. We're swimming ashore now. Quickly, the rope reaches the full length of the arc and strains. The rope holds, and the fellows begin swinging toward the riverbank. Bill keeps pushing the two boys against the rope and holding them, helping them to hold on. Finally, Bill's feet strike shallow water, and he pushes the boys ahead of him to safety. Henry and Stumpy wade into the river and give Bill a hand with the half-frozen boys. It's okay now, young friends. We've got you. Take it easy. You're in solid ground now. All right. Let's get everybody into the cab. Head for the hospital. Well, how are all the members of the Polar Bear Club today? <laughs> uh, we're recovering, Mayor. Too bad. <laughs> Boy, I'm sure glad we got out of that mess. Yeah. Bill? I guess you've had more than your share of swimming in refrigerated water, haven't you? I sure have, Mayor. If I knew this was going to happen, I'd have paid for that fence myself. <laughs> <laughs> Which reminds me, there's something i got to do. Mayor, I want to put a motion on the floor. You have the floor, Fred. That is, if the doc will let you get out of bed. <laughs> All right, I'll make the motion from my bed. I move that we get the fencing project started at once. Tell the council all my objections have been overruled. I know what you mean, Fred. And I think we got enough aldermen in this room to carry the motion. You ready for the question? Question. question. All in favor of Naughty Pines building a protection fence along Shady River, the city bearing the full expense, say aye. Aye. Contrary, no. Motion's carried. We'll vote aye on that too, Mayor. See you next week for more adventure with... <laughs>